Welcome everyone. It is September and I decided, you know, the universe threw me a um, curveball. So I'm, I'm rolling with it, right? Um, I decided I'm going to put out this video on September's astrology. Uh, I hope you enjoy it because I was not planning on releasing it online. I was planning on um, sharing it offline with a meetup group locally, but that event got canceled indefinitely. Hopefully, you know, we'll work out the scheduling conflicts and, you know, get back on track for October. But in the meantime, I'm like, well, you know what? I'm just going to put it here uh, on YouTube and uh, hopefully you guys like it and if you do and you want to see more videos like this make sure to give me a like or a comment or something give me feedback to let me know I'm always you know trying to pay attention to what's working for my audience so um, and definitely if you get something good from it let me know um, but we're, what we're going to cover in this video is a basic overview for people who just want the basics and get out and go um, and then I'm going to talk about what to expect in just the main areas of life, right? Love and relationships, uh, career and money, and yes, I'm going to even talk about the world at large politically because, you know, the, the macro is affecting the micro. <laughs> it really is. And then for those of you who can stay a little bit longer, I'm going to have some important dates, some advice, and um, if you can make it to the very end, I will have a homework assignment for the month ahead so that you can make the most of the current energy. By the way, I hope you enjoy uh, this scenery. I'm here in Texas for those of you who don't know. Mask free, mandate free, and just breathing in that fresh air, right? Okay, <laughs> let's get into it. Okay, so starting out the first half of this month, there's going to be a lot of Virgo and Pisces energy, and that is putting an emphasis on the tangible versus the intangible, the spiritual uh, versus the mundane. And so I think that this energy is going to be really good for reflecting and getting clear about things that maybe you haven't been clear on particularly how do we make those ideals a reality um, looking at perhaps some sober realities of uh, the way it is versus the way you want it to be um, yes this might be a little bit emotional because you know these there are lunar energies involved um, on the 6th and the 20th where you're having to let go of these discrepancies right between what's going on you know um, in the 3d realm reality the mundane the everyday life versus that higher minded fifth dimension um, reality and so yeah there could be some sensitivities about that having to release ideals having to accept some sober realities uh, these are energies, particularly emotional energies that I think that we're dealing with um, this month. And as the month progresses, we're going to get into more uh, Libra Scorpio energies in the, the second half of the month. And that is going to put a lot more em emphasis on uh, relationships and intimacy. It will be a good time if you want to reconcile with somebody that maybe you've had some differences you know, again, that's if you want to do that, right? You can use the energy that way, or it could be simply that you are reconciling something within yourself that is maybe unresolved up until this point. It is going to be a good month for um, negotiating or renegotiating contracts and agreements with others, reconciling those differences. Although we do have Mercury retrograde the 27th of this month and we're entering shadow on that as early as the 6th of this month so you know the standard advice with mercury retrograde is oh don't sign contracts but many of us have been stuck and trying to get forward movement uh, because of all the retrograde activity that we're in the midst of right now so I mean if you're trying to get forward movement like sign a lease I'm not gonna sit here and say don't do it but you know, with all of this uh, Mercury retrograde energy, even in shadow, you know, uh, from the sixth onward, just make sure that you're reading the fine print. Make sure that you are being as 
uh, open as possible, you know, with getting all the information out on the table up front. By the way, you know, these energies emanate. So I'm already experiencing some of this. Um, I've had some misunderstandings and I don't think that anybody was outright trying to be deceptive. And I'm saying like within the last few days, okay, within the last week, and we're not even in shadow yet, okay? But I notice it wasn't necessarily that anybody was being deceptive or trying to hide or conceal or anything like that. Um, it was things that were left unsaid or under communicated or um, we made an agreement and then there's somebody, some curveball was thrown and then I wasn't really notified and then I have to make changes. So, right, misunderstandings, delays, technical issues can come up with Mercury retrograde and you might already be feeling it as am I. I'm filming this on September 1st and I'm already feeling it and we're not even in shadow yet. So. Or maybe I'm just blaming it on Mercury retrograde, right? It's convenient. <laughs> now, we are in a lot of heavy retrograde energy. We come into this month with that, and it remains with us throughout September. We've got Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus, a lot of these outer planets, you know, in retrograde. And that started coming online back, you know, uh, that came that came in line back in may june and um actually this is normal you know it happens about this time every year i really feel like it's where that saying the dog days of summer came from uh where you know things are just kind of like you know it, it's it's it gets it gets kind of stagnant or static static yes in the energy and, and you're waiting for some shift. You're waiting for the seasons to change, right? With fall uh, approaching. And so we're kind of even still in September, a bit in this stuck energy. And I don't think we're gonna start feeling that lift off until about October when we start pulling out of all these retrogrades. So yes, during this month of September, you may still feel stuck on some things like things are not moving forward or they're not moving forward as fast or as quickly as you would like. Ugh, Ugh. feeling it myself, you know, but um, the, I think the sage advice here with Mercury retrogrades or really any retrogrades is that the, the higher purpose and plan of the energy is to give you an opportunity to catch your breath because when these retrogrades lift, uh, things are going to start getting forward movement. And so what do you do? You, um, you get grounded, you center, you plan, you strategize, you revise, you edit, you reevaluate. It's all the re's right with the retrograde. So do that while you can. And I seriously say that because some astrologers are saying that next month is probably, you know, month of October is probably going to be the craziest month out of 2021. And, you know, there are other astrologers that are saying next month is definitely a month to um, hunker down and prepare for the major holy shifts that are coming in November and December when we get into eclipse season. So, and, and yes, and when those eclipses come, we are going to be out of a lot, most of these retrogrades. So catch your breath, get grounded, center, plan, strategize, because it's not going to be like this much longer. It really won't. Okay. Now coming into this month, in addition to all these retrogrades, well, we had two full moons in rebellious Aquarius. Uh, yeah, that was July and August. And, um, if you're an Aquarian like me, I hope it didn't hit you too hard. That first one in July, eh, you know, felt a little something. The second one, man, I had to like, I had to gather myself. I had to pull myself together. <laughs> um, but, you know, collectively, regardless of your sign, I think that that energy brought us into September of over the last two months, having to release things, let things out, you know. Aquarius is an air sign and we air signs like to vent. Sometimes, you know, people who are not air signs don't understand. We got to, you know, blow some steam every now and then, let things out. And so there was a lot of venting with the protests, especially when Mercury was in Leo. People were very vociferous. Oh, you might not have seen it on mainstream media, but if you were following, you know, alternative media on social media, 
um, then you, you probably saw all the protests that are breaking out all over the world. And so people were feeling more free and, and, and trying to find more freedom um, with that energy collectively. And just to give perspective, you know, for these last two months, well, this entire year of 2021, we have been dealing with the Saturn Uranus squares. And um, that's a quite significant thing because the last time that happened was in 1988 with the uh, collapse of the Soviet Union, the fall of the Berlin Wall. And, you know, what came out of that was the United States emerged as a superpower. So definitely this energy is, you know, bringing about the collapse of societal structures and it's shattering old systems. And yeah, those full moons, in Aquarius, we're definitely just adding other, you know, additional layers to that energy that we've been experiencing since mid-February and mid-June. And we're going to experience that uh, Saturn Uranus square again in late December. So really all through this year, layers upon layers of humanity, the collective, which is Aquarius, uh, trying to like break the shackles off and get free with this contrast of authoritarianism versus rebellion, right? Because uh, of course it's very rebellious energy. Okay, what to expect in September with love, relationships, career, money, and the world at large. Let's start with love and relationships. I think that from the 20th onward, you know, with the sun in Libra at that time, we're going to have a lot of opportunities to get closer to other people and relationships to overcome differences, to build trust in these relationships. Um, it's going to be a really good time from the 26th onward to talk things out because we've got a grand air trine. I'm going to talk more in detail later when we get into um, important dates. Okay. But just briefly, um, there's a lot of energy in Libra and in air that is really supporting people coming together, talking things out, thinking things through. Now, when you add this, um, Mercury retrograde in the sign of Libra from the 27th onward, uh, you could find yourself feeling nostalgic, you know, uh, about somebody from your past, or you might be intuiting that they're thinking of you. Um, by the way, you know, I, as a, a person who's done private, a lot of private readings uh, with tarot and astrology, I, I do get a lot of, you know, ramped up uh, client clients come in, you know, peaked activity with my work. A lot of people during these energies come in and they want to know, they want to get a reading about somebody from the past. They want to know, well, are they thinking of me because I'm thinking of them or I had dreams and oh my God, watch out for your dreams because, you know, the, the, the dream activity, particularly around the 20th with the full moon and Pisces, again, layering all these energies in here. Um, might be getting dream activities of somebody from your past and might really start get, getting you going about somebody that you have unresolved issues with or you haven't seen them in a while or whatever and it might get you going. Should I reconcile? Should I not? By the way, I have a, I do have a video on here if y'all want to watch it um, called Should I Reconcile with My Ex <laughs> uh, during a Mercury retrograde, okay? I'm going to put the link for that if anybody needs it. I'm going to put the link for that at the end of this video. So just stay tuned to the very end and you can click onto that video if you're interested. But um, others of you, I know you're like, oh, heck no, get out of my dreams. I'm not going back, you know, and you're not, you have no intention of reconciling with the ex. So again, I will say this, and even if somebody in, from the past pops up in your dreams and has you going thinking about it, um, but you have absolutely no intention of reconciling with them. Well, this is a good time to get closure within yourself. And yeah, having to do with past relationships, past relationship issues. So, right, I mean, and I'm just gonna say, just as a side note, we're not even totally into this energy, but I'm already picking up on it. Some of you might be as well because if you've got 
you know, aspects in your natal chart that give you an energetic signature where you are more sensitive to these things. You feel them coming down the pike before they really, you know, go head on. Um, as I tend to, you know, then you might already be feeling early in this month. I mean, in fact, last night, and it's September 1st right now as I'm filming. So even last night, I had a dream of a couple people from my past. And it was very nice, very nice dream. Basically, oh, I love you. I care about you. I hope you're doing all right. You know, this type of thing. But I woke up and I'm like, what does this mean? Am I supposed to call them? I'm supposed to, eh. And I tuned into it. I'm like, you know what? They're still not sorry. They're not changing. We are going in different directions. Um, we have different values. This is a misalignment. So, you know, yep, God bless you too. And happy trails to you. And, you know, you, you go in your life path destiny as I go in mine. We're going to have to part ways on a loving note, right? And it could, that's all it could be about. But you decide in this month of September with these retrogrades. By the way, that retrograde is going to last for about four weeks. And so you got four weeks there of if you do want to reconcile with them, the energy is supporting it, though. Uh, be careful, you know, be careful. Um, really talk it through to make sure that you're not doing a repeat, right? Okay, so moving on to career and money, um, especially the 8th of September and onward. And by the way, if you're he hearing stuff falling and dropping, I am sitting under a pecan tree. And there are pecans falling as I'm talking. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? We're getting into fall. So, okay. With career and money, especially the 8th onward, I think that we're going to begin to see signs of the, what I will call the great resignation. Um... And this is, you know, happening as large corporations, the military are um, more or less coercing uh, employees to get vaccinated if they want to continue with their employment. And this is per Biden's promptings, right? We've seen him uh, well mandated for the, the military. We've seen him um, prompt other companies, corporations to require uh, vaccine mandates. And uh, I would call it coercion because, you know, uh, people are not quite lining up for this thing as they'd hoped. So what's left to do? You got to force people if they're not choosing to do it. At least that's the mentality. So I think that we're going to see more of uh, this going on with employers and the military. And as we do, we're going to see more people like uh, resigning and I've seen signs of it on uh, social media that people are putting in their notices two-week notices I'm out you know and even seeing that uh, particularly in the medical field shockingly there are a lot of medical professionals who don't agree with uh, getting the vax and so they're going to be leaving and that is going to cause staffing shortages at nursing homes, hospitals, care facilities. Um, and, you know, it's also at the same time, uh, for example, in California, where they're already dealing with this, what I'm hearing is that if you're like a nurse out there who is going to get vaccinated, um, they're willing to pay high, high dollar, record high amount to get uh, the shortage um, filled and made up for um, from people who are willing to get the vax. So we are seeing this divide and um, I'm even seeing, you know, I think we will continue to see more lawsuits. Okay, I've, I've already started to see lawsuits popping up of employees uh, suing employers uh, for vax injuries resulting from getting the vaccine, having complications shortly thereafter, all because they were trying to keep their job. And what I'm hearing is employers are now backpedaling on this mandate because, right, you can't, if you have an injury resulting from the vax, you cannot sue the vaccine makers. They've long been protected. They lobbied Congress, by the way, back in the 80s, 86. Uh, to be exact, to be um, legally 
uh, protected from lawsuits for uh, vaccine injury, death. And so you can't, if you can't sue the vaccine makers for this, then people are gonna go to the employer and say, well, you made me get this to keep my job. And now, um, you know, they're having heart problems, paralysis, oh, all kinds of stuff that I've seen posted online. Man, I gotta be careful with this and not say too much because you know who doesn't like it on here. Okay, so additionally on the money front, I think that what we're gonna see is, um, we're gonna continue to see more uh, meddling in money markets from the government and from large institutional banks and investors. Um, that is gonna become more apparent. I mean, I knew earlier this year that the stock market was rigged. You have uh, people with deep pockets go in there. You know, these large institutional investors buy up all kinds of stuff to artificially inflate and make it look like uh, the market is great when it's not. And now we're finding out the same thing is more or less happening within cryptocurrency. And so, um, I do believe it's going to become more apparent as um, this continues on. And I think we're also gonna see more black market economies popping up in response to these VAX mandates, okay? For example, as you have employers who are mandating the vaccine to their employees, I am seeing this counterculture emerge of uh, Vax free job boards. Okay, by the way, if you're looking for that, I saw it over at gab.com. Um, people over there are helping one another. They're saying, okay, like, you know, uh, you need a job and you don't want to get vaccinated. Well, here's a list of employers over here who are willing to hire you without a vaccine. So you've got a lot of these pro-liberty people who are, are helping and are totally, they're helping one another and they're separating from the system of coercion, mandates. Um, and I'm also seeing similarly that, um, you know, as even though we've got, we've still got some states here in the US and there's countries around the world who are increasing lockdowns and even, you know, I do hear rumors that that will, that will tighten up and given the energy very likely tighten up on, on lockdowns as we get more into the fall, into the flu season, which by the way, we did, where did the flu go, right? But what is usually typically flu season, now we're going to see it blamed on variants and oh, you know, let's go back into lockdown because of that. All right. And so um, as that kind of stuff happens, we're creating, a, we're creating black market economies. We're creating countercultures that are saying we're not participating in this lockdown society, this mandate way of life. Um, for example, a uh, liberty-minded woman that I, I follow on uh, YouTube has been recently putting out videos sharing, you know, her uh, pro-liberty small business friend saying, hey, come check out my friend's store, check out my friend's business. Uh, she's wide open for business, no mask mandates over here, come shop, you know, nobody's gonna hassle you or harass you or ask you for papers. Come support small local businesses, let's help each other. And the pro-liberty people are really coming together to push back on this. So it's almost like two different worlds are emerging, okay? Which is, is quite different, you know, interesting. Again, if we go back to the astrology and I mentioned the Libra energy where there's this kind of stuff going on like that, <laughs> weighing things out with Libra and there's two sides back and forth and Pisces energy with the fish going this way and that way, I'm just getting a lot of different opposing a dichotomy going on here is emerging from these energies. I think also um, on the monetary note uh, with the economy and all of that, the need to stockpile is becoming more apparent. We just on the 31st of August had a trucker strike in the US and Australia. Um, there's been a lot of censorship of that. So if you didn't hear about it or it was downplayed or mocked or ridiculed, oh, dig deeper and actually been seeing a lot more content. The most content coverage of that has been on TikTok, interestingly, uh, because that's one of the 
yeah, they do have algorithms, but it's not as suppressed and from what I can tell thus far it's not as suppressed as these other major uh, so social media outlets so we get a lot more uh, information on there about those strikes and so what those strikes are doing with the truckers is shutting down food supply you know um, and I've been saying it on my channel all of this year you need a stockpile, you need a stockpile because we could be seeing more of it. We really could. Um, we've also got what's coming up in September. Be aware with the housing market. Um, we just, you know, we're coming into this month with that um, eviction moratorium lifted, right? The Supreme Court ruled it was not constitutional. And so on one hand, you might be going, yippee, you know, finally there's gonna be more housing on the market and this is gonna lower prices. There's not gonna be all the bidding wars that we saw earlier this year, but um, hold your horses, you know, don't get excited just yet because I think again, given the energy and what I'm seeing online from real estate experts, um, it will likely remain, the housing market will likely remain a bit restrictive um, in September and onward, but for different reasons than before, right? Before it was just, you know, uh, inventory was low and that was driving the prices artificially up. People were getting into bidding wars. Now what we see is the inventory freeze up, but you got a lot of landlords now who are shell shocked and they know that if, they get tenants in who don't pay them, the government might not have their back and they might end up losing their assets, losing, ruining their credit. And I'm talking about the small time landlords who really don't have the ability to take on these risks. Um, so what we were likely gonna see is um, stricter qualification requirements, higher deposits. And so I'm gonna say, if you've been trying like me to get moved all this year and you haven't been able to, this is a great month to get on waiting lists, as have I, um, and move as soon as possible, as soon as you get an opening, because I am concerned that as we get further along into this year, it is gonna get worse. Um, and, and that's because you're gonna have more and more people getting evicted, more and more people getting uh, foreclosed upon uh, as, as we get deeper into this year and into early January. Okay. And, and right. Usually those times a year, the typical cycles, people usually aren't moving much in the winter time. And so prices usually go down. I am concerned that there's going to be such an influx of people uh, getting evicted, getting foreclosed upon that, you know, yes, inventory is going to come available, but then it's going to still be restrictive. Um, because these landlords are very shell-shocked at this point and um, it could mean higher deposits, higher qualifications for getting in. By the way, if you want to know uh, the YouTube channels that I follow in the financial community, um, I will have the link at the very end of this video so you can just click on to it if you are interested. Moving on to what's going on at the in the world at large, okay, politically, especially the 8th and onward, I think there's likely going to be a more lockdowns. So we're going to see more of this medical apartheid, segregation, medical discrimination, tyranny, and protests are likely going to be discouraged by harsher fines, harsher penalties. And I think the suppression is going to tighten up as well on social media where I'm hearing rumors that social media, large social media platforms are already rolling out plans to um, make the censorship even more restrictive. And so yet again, I see people going to alternatives, like say, you know, instead of going to Twitter, right, you go to gab.com. Uh, where you have more freedom of speech and the algorithm is not, you know, making it so that you, you, you're, you're talking into a black hole and nobody sees your posts because you're blacklisted, you know. Um, or worse, uh, deplatform, demonetize because you said something that wasn't 
going along with the official narrative, the status quo. Also, I think politically, um, on a global level uh, in September, we are going to start seeing the rise of Taliban 3.0. Um, there were illusions of ending war, and that's what I will call it, um, because basically we saw with the withdrawal, uh, U.S. withdrawal of, of um, troops from Afghanistan, well, heck, we have uh, maybe 100, 200 um, Americans were left behind. Even the um, service animals were left behind. And millions of dollars worth of equipment uh, left behind to weaponize the Taliban. And so um, my belief is that this did not conclusively end the war in the Middle East, but it has extended it by design. And I'm going to say be very careful about getting online in the month of September. I don't want to say, you know, stick your head in the sand, right? But there could be some very disturbing images, unfortunately. I hate to say this, uh, like we saw 9-11. I remember on 9-11, I saw some things that I will never be able to get out of my brain, right? 20 years later, I can't unsee what I saw on that day. And I'm, I'm very sorry to say that because of the way that we withdrew from Afghanistan. It's not the fact that we withdrew. We probably should have never been over there, okay? Don't get me started on that. But because of the way we withdrew, we've actually extended the war rather than ended it conclusively, okay? And because we're extending warfare in the Middle East, my concern is that we are going to see some more gruesome images in social media and in the media in the coming days that might poke at the collective to, oh, let's get reinvolved again. Let's do this again. And uh, this was all by design to extend the war, if you ask me. Um, by the way, if you wanna know the political channels I follow, um, just to stay in, know, in the know about it, you know, I've got a video on that, the 20 political channel, channels that I follow here on YouTube. I'll have uh, a video at the very end of this that you can click on if you just wanna, when this video finishes, you can move on to that one. You can watch that video if you're interested. And also just a friendly reminder, um, if you, you know, want to stay in the know about these fast changing events, like real time stuff, you can find me on Twitter and I'm on Gab at Warrior Woman 212. Haven't been on Gab much lately, but you can definitely find me uh, actively on Twitter um, at Warrior Woman 212. And so let's move on to some important dates. Starting tomorrow, which for me it will be this, you know, it's the second, it's tomorrow. I'm filming on the first. So um, starting tomorrow on the second, we've got Mars and Virgo opposing Neptune retrograde and Pisces. Um, this is a shift from Mars being in Leo where people were a lot more outspoken in the last few months. And so now this month, you know, we're coming into September with the, the tone right out the bit, bat, right out the gate, uh, is already shifting um, to a more serious, critical tone. And yeah, this could amount to less protesting. And I don't think it's that people are okay now, that people have accepted things. They're like, okay, I accept defeat. You know, I'm going to be told what, what to do by other people, fine, you win, big brother, you know. I don't think that's it at all. Um, there is a concern that with this energy, there could be some depression, okay? And that might be another reason why people, there's a pullback because this is a struggle that's going on. It's been going on all this year. This, like I said earlier, the, the, dichotomy of authoritarianism versus rebellion and um, people might at this point right we're 
we're getting into the fourth quarter of the year, right? We, um, we're coming into the tail end of this year and how far have we come with this? People are maybe realizing this is, this is actually a bigger fight than what they had prepared for or bargained for. Like these people, the authorities will not be releasing controls easily, all right? And so there can be some depression and disillusionment and, you know, on a more personal level, it might not necessarily be about lockdowns for you or the mandates it, or the economy. It could simply be, you know, with relationships, definitely with all this Libra and Scorpio energy coming up. So um, just be careful with these feelings, feeling victimized, feeling powerless, um, and try uh, during, you know, either the first week of this month to identify where you're unclear and uncertain in your life and try to get a strategy, if at all possible, with these goals. Now on the fourth, Saturn is going to be in, uh, Saturn is in Capricorn, trying Mercury in Virgo. So this is very earthy energy, right? And again, so yet again, another layer here in this first week where we're coming into September with more of a serious tone. It's very contemplative, critical, strategic. My advice, again, is to use this energy to be more discerning and selective about the information that you are accepting as true. Because, right, Mercury is a lot about communications. And the energy on the second with, you know, Neptune is a lot about media. So um, careful about the information that you're getting. And then, yeah, on the sixth with Mercury um, retrograde, you know, that entering shadow, um, we, we also have um, maybe a, t a tendency to not get all the information or misunderstand or information is being held back. It could be a number of things. Um, and also on the sixth, we've got the new moon in Virgo. So in some respect, issues having to do with security are probably gonna be illuminated for you. Um, the good news is that you have the opportunity to gain more clarity during this time that will help you feel more secure if you're dealing with those kind of issues. And if you do feel like things are out of control in your life, then it would be a good time to do some self-care, uh, maybe organize or um, clean something, you know, it's, it's kind of a psychological thing. Like I'm, I'm working and I'm putting things in order that are not in order in my life that I can. Might not be the thing that you want to work on, but it is definitely shifting the energy. It might even be like rearranging furniture. And I know these things seem superficial maybe because some of you are dealing with far bigger fish to fry but I think if you can do what you can, when you can to the best of your ability, it's gonna help shift the energy and that's gonna help you um, at a psychological, emotional level with that new moon. And also mm, try to maybe, you know, practice some acceptance of life's imperfections um, and things that don't quite live up to our expectations. I think that we're going to be very much scrutinizing things with the Virgo energy, you know, and there's, there's good and bad to that, right? That we can use that for positive or negative. Um, ask yourself, how can these difficulties be used to strengthen us? Okay. I think that's the constructive use of it. Uh, those of you who have health issues at this time, uh, around the six might find that your eyes and ears are affected. Uh, definitely watch out for digestive issues and moving on to the eighth uh, jupiter joins saturn and capricorn this is not a conjunction but they will be in the same sign of capricorn until the 13th so uh, this is bringing a shift for jupiter because jupiter up until this point has been in freedom loving aquarius uh, where people were feeling less restricted in the last couple months okay uh, but now it moves into control loving Capricorn uh, where there are feelings of restriction that return. And those feelings of restriction likely involve authority figures, the government, and are 
probably impacted you in terms of you know the monetary system your public life your status so yeah be aware of that over the next definitely two months where um, we are probably going to be dealing with a lot more restriction October and November from the government. All right, moving on to the 10th. Venus is in Scorpio and beware of, you know, jealousy, possessiveness, power dynamics. Um, consider during this time is a good energy to consider how other people in your life are impacting you at an individual level. Are they empowering you? Are they disempowering you, right? Like I know a lot of people who took the job because, not because they wanted to, or they uh, agreed with it, or they believed in it, but they did it because of peer pressure, because of what their family said, or their friends were saying or doing, oh, you know, and I saw a lot of segregation around that as well. Oh, we don't want to hang out with you if you're not vaccinated. I'm I, even shockingly, I heard a lady, I was at a doctor's office earlier this year, doctor's office, and she was on the phone with somebody and she said they can't come over to the birth, our kid's birthday party if they're not vaccinated. And I saw a lot of stuff like that on social media, medical segregation, medical apartheid. And so, um, something to maybe reevaluate and again this might have nothing to do with those issues it could be on a more mundane day-to-day -day level you know if you looking at relationships and and yeah with the retrograde this month you asking yourself do I want to reconnect with this person because are they gonna really be on my team and you know empowering me as I'm empowering them so something to consider on the 14th, Mars is in Libra, and so, you know, our efforts become a lot more diplomatic during this time. People are more likely to cooperate. They're also more persuasive. It'll be easier for you to be persuaded or for you to persuade others. Um, just be careful that you are not compromising your core values. Uh, just for the sake of others okay kind of almost what i was saying earlier with this venus and scorpio stuff all right um trust your gut also with us you know moving towards this full moon in pisces on the 20th okay um listen to what your gut is telling you about relationships and compromises that you should make or maybe you shouldn't make okay because maybe these people are not empowering you um or you you're unable or unwilling to empower them and what they want to do okay um and if you are having trouble discerning i always say listen to what people do not what they say right because again going back to this whole ma mask mandate you know uh example we might have some employers backpedaling, which I'm already seeing. Uh, I saw on social media, you know, at an, a nursing home, a uh, lot of their their staff, medical staff, I think about 15 of them put in their resignations uh, because they were put on notice they had to be vaccinated by, I think, mid-September. Well, these people said, all right, we're out, you know, about 15 people. And now, now the people, now the uh, upper management is backpedaling and saying, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, you know, we can work on this. Uh, we can negotiate with, I mean, if you have a pass from a doctor, a medical exemption, we'll work with you. But they're not really telling people, you don't have to do this, you have free choice. Um, they're not telling people that they're exempt for philosophical or religious reasons. So again, be very careful because I can see a lot of PR going on during this time, public relations, lip service, <laughs> a double talk going on with this uh, Mars and Libra where people are really asserting their agenda and they're doing it in this very diplomatic way. Uh, in a very surfacey, like it sounds right, but does it smell right? Like, just be careful of that and do not agree to something again 
with us coming in a Mercury retrograde, do not agree with something, do not sign your consent away to something that you don't really understand, okay? Um, you don't understand what's fully entailed in that. Now, moving on to the 20th with a full moon in Pisces, uh, this could be a time where we are having to release uh, some idealization of something in our lives. I think there's gonna be a lot of heightened sensitivity and awareness, tune into that, use it for your benefit. It could be a very spiritual and imaginative time. Just be really cautious about feelings of insecurity popping up, victimization, passive behavior. Again, next to all that Libra energy, my God, don't just like, you know, don't, don't be, let's not be happy plastic people, right? Let's not do that. Um, because I can kind of see that with all this Libra Pisces energy. Um, and, and maybe coming from a place of feeling like I have no choice, very Piscean. I have no choice or I don't want to rock the boat, very Libra, okay? So if you're feeling blocked during this time with all those retrogrades going on, know, know within your spirit. I'm encouraging you to know. I have to remind myself from time to time because I deal with a lot of feelings of blockage, okay? For reasons I'll maybe talk about some other video, but trust me when I say, my God, I'm in a nodal inverse right now. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. The blockage, I relate to it. And if you are going through these feelings of you feel there's no way around it, there's no way out, I'm gonna have to do this, I don't see any way to get around it. Um, use this Piscean energy that gives a lot of imagination and creativity uh, to find a way. Because usually there is a way, but it's not gonna be out in the open, right? They're not gonna tell you, right? They're not, you have to do your homework, you have to do your research, you, you need to start searching, talking to people, asking questions, um, finding out what your resources are, looking at all your options, um, looking at things from through a different lens, okay? That's how we can use that energy to find a way where there seems to be no way Pray about it, pray about it. Also ask God to show you, show you the way to get around this. Um, some of you I'm hearing intuitively is gonna take a leap of faith, okay? Um, some of you are maybe wanting to do for you what you're unwilling to do for yourself. You want somebody else to stop or to speak up what's happening. You don't wanna stick your neck out on the line. You don't wanna be the one to do it, but again, what is spirit, that higher level telling you? Um, and around the 20th with this full moon in Pisces is gonna be a good time to, to tune into the reality of what are you honestly, soberly gonna have to do to bring heaven down to earth? And it might be really uncomfortable. You might not like it. You might say, you know, I'd rather just roll over and die. Let them, let them, <laughs> let them jab me. <laughs> Let them lock me in my house. I'd rather do that than, you know, get fined or lose my job or go to jail, you know? I'm just saying these are possibilities, all right, that I can see people grappling with during this time. Now, on the 22nd, the sun will be in Libra, and, um, you know, this is really putting a spotlight on relationships and your social life is highlighted during this time. Harmonizing with others is going to be greatly assisted. It's gonna be a good time for negotiating or renegotiating contracts and agreements, um, reconciling any differences. Just be aware of vacillating, going back and forth, um, weighing things out too much, you know, in your head to the point where you get analysis paralysis, which we air signs can do and definitely Libra, right? Um, Libra not wanting to rock the boat, not wanting to offend. So just be careful with that. And then on the 26th, we get into a grand air trine with the moon in Gemini, the sun and Mars in Libra and Saturn retrograde in Aquarius, all this air, all three air signs are in trine. And so it brings about a very thoughtful and thought provoking time, which is gonna be great for, you know, learning and sharing ideas and doing so in a very rational way, a very logical, maybe even analytical way. And this is a great time to, you know, think through 
and talk things out. Now, finally, on the 27th, Mercury retrograde in Libra. It's later going to shift into Virgo, Mercury retrograde in Virgo. And that's going to be until the 18th, by the way. We have Mercury retrograde until October 18th, so four weeks of this. Careful with your communications, careful with your technical advice devices, right? That's always the standard advice. The positive, though, is that there is going to be more reconciliatory um, harmonizing energy. I hope that wind is not disrupting the sound here, but you know, this could bring about uh, with the with Mercury retrograde and Leo more of a recon reconciliatory harmonizing energy in addition to the Sun already being in Libra on the 22nd right this is more layers of this Libra energy so if you are not reuniting with an old love this month or during that four week time period uh, you may simply find closure emotional closure on an issue from the past involving somebody that you're in a relationship and it might not even be a romantic relationship you'd be a family member or a friend or something like that this like i said is going to be a good time to revise old agreements um contracts but just be careful as we get closer and closer to the 27th and this retrograde uh, mercury retrograde be careful about the fine print um Right. I, I am not going to tell you, like some people like to say, oh, don't sign any contracts during Mercury Retrograde. Well, my God, if you've been trying to move like I have and you've been on a waiting list and they finally call you back in September and it's Mercury Retrograde or it's in shadow or whatever, well, have somebody, maybe another set of eyes to look that contract over before you sign it. But for God's sake, sign it. <laughs> sign it, you know, like get on with your life if you can, you know. Um, but just be aware that maybe there's some things that are not known during Mercury retrograde. Things are not being seen or understood clearly. And, you know, right, even with reconciling with an old love, um, you know, maybe again, at the beginning, it's all rosy, you know, and you're reminiscing about the good times. But after we get out of retrograde, you start saying, Oh, wait a minute. There's still that issue I have with them that we haven't resolved. And, oh, wait, they're not working on it. They're not changing and neither am I. So we're back at the same crossroads. Alternatively, you know, this could go either way. Alternatively, you could come back to what split you up in the first place and say, you know what? Had time to think about this. Let's talk this out. Let's get clear so that we don't, we can come back together um, stronger than we were before and not let this fallout happen again. Hopefully, God willing, right. All right, so here's some homework for the month ahead on how to use this energy to your best advantage. Uh, with the retrograde energy that is going on all this month, uh, like I said before, catch your breath, get grounded, get centered. Yeah, get out in nature, that helps, right? Um, and plan, strategize while you can. If that means you're putting in applications, getting on waiting lists, um, lining things up, maybe it doesn't change just yet this month. Maybe things still are stuck and unclear, but by God, you're, you're getting things lined up, okay? And use the lunar energy on the 6th and the 20th to really, this month, try to reconcile your ideals with reality. Um, hard as that might be and use all this Libra and grand air trine energy to mentally process and resolve issues within yourself talk things out with others if you can ally yourself with people who are empowering you and I'm hearing disassociate from those who are not I'm sorry I, I that was not me I heard that I got I had to say that somebody needed to hear it if people are disempowering you you need to disassociate, and that's just an intuitive hit. I just got right there while free flowing. All right, um, not in my notes at all. <laughs> okay, um, but pray about it. It's your life, your your relationships. The other assignment is relax while you can, because next month in October, it's likely not going to be so relaxed. Um, as we come out of these retrogrades, right? Planets start coming out of retrograde in early October. 
we start getting the green light on moving plans forward, maybe you get a call back on an application finally, you know, and things start getting out of the stuckness in October. And then before you know it, we're into eclipse season, November and December, that is gonna usher in some major holy shifts that are gonna be impacting us well into 2022. Okay, I'd say reaching all in, all the way into uh, May, June of 2022. Holy shifts. So buckle up, get ready for it, catch your breath, get grounded. And yeah, if you want me to look at your specific natal chart um, for you know the month of September um, or the remainder of this year, yes, I still do tarot and astrology readers for those who ask. Uh, you can... Um, get that over at crownedones.weebly.com. I'll have the link down below in the description box. I might even pin it in the comments. And remember, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like them, um, or you got something good out of it, you know, hit the like button, give me a comment, a share, a something. The feedback really helps me to understand what's working for my audience right now and what's not. Um, so I appreciate your support and until next time, be blessed.